In previous videos, I demonstrated the ability of maglev to mimic the flotation characteristics of various anti-gravity-like devices from science fiction, such as Back to the Future 2's hoverboard and the levitating dollies and medical gurneys from Star Trek and Star Wars, noting that methods will have to be devised to greatly enhance energy efficiency in order to approximate these devices more precisely. In researching this, I started with the principle of resonance, a condition in which maximum energy transfer occurs between a source of energy and the receiving system due to frequency matching. The source of energy in this case being the house electrical current and the receiving system being the magnetic flux circuit. By adding a non-polarized motor capacitor in series with the coil's inductance, a resonant tank circuit is created. Attempting to match the natural frequency of the circuit to the 60 cycles per second house current resulted in a much stronger AC magnetic field, increasing flotation height of the core by about 60% for the same input power. Another factor to look at is ohmic heating as pertains to current carrying conductors. As the cores become hotter, resistance increases due to increased internal atomic vibrations which hinder current flow. This mitigation of current drastically reduces flotation height. Placing the coil in the freezer overnight and again activating it with the series capacitor resulted in an additional 20% gain. This gave a total of 80% greater height at a cold temperature in series capacitor compared to the height at room temperature with no capacitor. And actually 80% is a little conservative as the total was closer to 100% greater upon first activation when the coil was at its coldest. These results imply that a circuit tuned even more precisely to resonance and coils made from high superconductor wire could conceivably result in far greater levitation heights than is currently realized even in maglev trains, which typically hover between a fraction of an inch up to just under four inches. Stronger magnetic forces for levitation also mean stronger forces for lateral stabilization, enabling us to potentially de design massive vehicles, which could also, in contrast to maglev trains, float free freely in mid-air with no physical guiding structures whatsoever. Instead, the invisible walls of magnetic fields will provide the stabilization and guidance, thus more closely approximating the anti-gravity technologies of sci-fi pop culture. The true potential of maglev's anti-gravity likability is somewhat hinted at here in a fascinating demonstration by electrical engineer Eric Lathwaite. With an AC electromagnet unit composed of an array of coils wrapped around the poles of a horseshoe-shaped steel core, he was able to float one end of a 100-pound aluminum plate. The plate was supported by a rope at the opposite end so that the test system was not yet taking the entire weight of the plate, but the levitator was still supporting an estimated 50 pounds or so of the total. As Lathwaite shows, a flotation height of 7 inches was achieved when the device was activated at 200 volts. This increased to 11 inches at 400 volts. With two additional horseshoe shaped electromagnets to form a three-unit system. Lathwaite had plans to lift the plate even higher to it, an astonishing two feet, while being loaded with an additional 200 pounds, dispensing with the rope altogether and having the entire arrangement float unsupported in mid-air, just as with his much smaller three-unit system, but at a height similar to the demonstration here from the channel Veritasium. We must keep in mind that Lathwaite's demonstration was using only ordinary magnet wire. Coils made of superconductor wire would drastically increase the performance of such a system, perhaps enabling floating heights up to three feet or more for the same input energy. It is unknown if Lathwaite made use of the inductor capacitor resonance in his system or not, but even without resonance, there is still ample room to maximize current in the coils via the understanding of how the factors of inductance, such as number of turns of wire, can affect current flow according to input frequency. Though there are indeed functional limitations of the maglev travel concept and that the ground surfaces will have to be made of or contain metals, maglev is still quite viable as a practical transportation system, especially as superconductive materials and nuclear power becomes more available. Further, new maglev technologies by the names of magrel and ironlev are both currently being tested which can utilize existing railway infrastructure for levitation, tremendously reducing integration costs. But of course, the ultimate realization of levitation technology would be the almost fable anti-gravity. Anti-gravity technology is typically conceptualized in at least a couple ways. One is a repulsive form in which an artificially generated gravitational field 
could repel a planet's gravitational field and or large masses such as a terrestrial surface in exactly the same way that electrodynamic suspension maglev repels a metallic surface. This view is conceptualized in the Star Wars universe in which engines called repulsor lifts enable vehicles to float by vertically pushing against planetary gravitational fields. A number of physicists believe that, at the very least, this type of anti-gravity exists, but is at present observable, observable only on an astronomical scale, is a byproduct of dark energy, the hypothesized driving force behind the universe's accelerating expansion. One problem with this concept of anti-gravity, however, is, is due to the fact that gravity, as one of the fundamental forces of the universe, is about 36 orders of magnitude, or 1 trillion 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 times weaker than electromagnetism, and as such, this repulsive gravity might be only observable on said astronomical scale, and quite impractical on any earthly or human scale, unless there is some way in which the force could be greatly and practically amplified, perhaps through resonance or some type of coherence or focalizing technique. After all, who would have thought 100 years ago that light could be made sufficiently coherent to cut through solid metal or even propel a solar cell to subluminal speeds? Such statements would have been deemed preposterous by the scientific establishment of the time, but today reflect a scientific reality. So perhaps we shouldn't yet say that a practical repulsive gravity is impossible. But a more problem, promising form of anti-gravity or gravity control might be what is called gravity shielding. This principle is conceived to arise from using a material or process which could effectively screen a, a mass from terrestrial gravity hence making it lighter. Dr. Ning Li and Eugene Pogdanov are two researchers who claim to have achieved this type of anti-gravity via the agency of rotating superconductors. In fact, Dr. Ning Li's research reportedly involved both the shielding and repulsive aspects of anti-gravity. Please see my video Gravitational Levitation linked in the description below for more on this research and an in-depth discussion of the concept of turning gravitation on its head. As incredible as this proposed principle is, it, is, it would still be a question as to whether or not gravity shielding would result in levitation or simply a reduction in apparent weight. If the latter, then perhaps the shielding process, if found to be energy efficient or even energy negligible, could cause an object or conveyance to become substantially lighter, after which more conventional means of lift, such as vertically oriented rocket or jet thrusters, could come into play. With a significant fraction of its weight reduced, a vehicle could then be lifted and propelled with much less thruster power as well as with considerably less fuel. If the shielding was nearly 100%, we might even envision a flight scenario similar to that imagined in the late 80s, early 90s TV show, My Secret Identity, in which the protagonist could levitate and fly using the propulsive force of an aerosol can in each hand. Though anti-gravity seems to be eluding us at present, we do have its electromagnetic counterpart with great advancements being made almost daily. Incorporating maglev into our current transportation system will grant great insight into not only how such flotation devices would behave in the atmosphere at different speeds, but also how such flight control systems should be designed as they will be somewhat different than those of airplanes. We also have to look at the extraneous effects that force fields of any kind can have on the environment. We know that a strong ma magnetic field oscillating or moving translationally at high speeds would generate eddy currents in any nearby metals or conductive materials, effects which could prove disruptive. Effective methods will have to be developed to mitigate this disruption. Similarly, a moving gravitational device might also generate disruptive effects, such as gravitational eddy currents, which would also have to be minimized. Further, knowing the relationship between gravity and time as predicted by general relativity, we might even wonder what effects that gravitational devices will have on local time. And would the temporal effects of these devices be localized and limited to the immediate surroundings? Or would the gravitational ripples have more far-reaching effects? Some effects might at first seem small, but later turn out to have cumulative effects that ultimately create unintended temporal disturbances. How would such disturbances manifest? Would they be negligible or problematic? Needless to say, it would make it a fascinating area of study. In the meantime, 
Maglev seems to be quite safe in developing into its ultimate incarnation, my Issei hypothetical future transition into antigravity, or perhaps some other ubiquitously acting force which could enable devices to flow over any surface rather than just surfaces that are metallic. All that would be left to do is to simply switch out the electromagnetic engines for the new ones.